fans, welcome to the Rangers News YouTube channel. My name is Cameron Willis and I'm joined by Jordan Carlyle and James Black. After Rangers managed to edge out what was a bit nervy in the end, 2-1 victory over Aberdeen at Pathology. A, a massive three points for Rangers. Um, a huge game, the pressure was on beforehand. Um, before we kind of get into the kind of nuts and bolts in the, of the game, James, uh, how big a win was that for Rangers? Oh, it was huge. Um, like Nikita Yellow, which was in this morning's paper, saying that if they won today, they had one hand in the trophy. And you can't argue with that. Um, I think that's a massive, massive step towards the title. What about you, Jordan? How, how big a three points is that? Yeah, I think so too. And I'm basically having no Jack Arfield and Roof for half the old firm and this game and, and still getting six points from it is uh, an unbelievable uh, turnaround or, uh, of results. And and I think for, for Jared, I think he was saying after the game, it's nine from nine against Aberdeen, six from six. Boyd was adding that uh, from Celtic. And that, that's brilliant. And just night and day compared to the struggles of the first couple of years. So, uh yeah, an absolutely massive win. Um, and I'd, when you're talking about handling the trophy, we've been trying to be quite cautious, haven't we, in terms of where we're saying Rangers are at. But look, it's it's a massive hurdle out of the way. Um, and, you know, there aren't more difficult games in old firms than Aberdeen away in the league. So, um, but yeah, it's a massive step forward. I would say... A huge, a huge three points. I think the match itself was a very kind of weird one. It was frenetic right from the off, um, from when the game kicked off. I think the first half was chocked full of more incident than the second. But um, it was an interesting game. It was an absolutely massive win. I think Rangers showed a real kind of professionalism to go out and a real hunger and a real quality. I think I think there was a, Times and flashes of the games, it's amongst the best we've played. It was just absolutely fantastic. Some of the wee triangles, like, there was a hell of a lot of one twos, so much good movement, and, and there was like, like a, an attitude and an impetus and a determination in Rangers today. And, and it ended up seeing us through, but yeah, so the, ma the match kicks off. Uh, I think it's in, within like about 20 seconds, uh, the ball comes, drops out of the sky, Ash Taylor leaves it. And Morelos is, uh, appears to be clear, uh, clear through on goal. James, at that point, when he kind of scuffed it, what did you think? Did you think it was not going to be Rangers' day? Do you know, I thought the opposite. I thought it kind of set the tone a little bit for what was to come. Um, all right, Morelos probably should have done much better with that effort. But I thought he looked hungry, he looked sharp. And yeah, it was a kind of a decent enough start. Um, yeah, from there, and then straight up the pitch again, uh, it was about a minute or two later, Sam Cosgrove has an opportunity. Uh, it kind of ball comes away from a clearance, Ryan Hedges clears it, uh, it's flicked on. Um, Cosgrove takes a good, decent wee touch kind of over goal too, if I remember correctly, and then goes and manages to kind of force him wide. Um, did that give you a kind of flavour for the, the threat that Aberdeen potentially posed in the match, John? Yeah, I, I think it, it was... You know, it was always likely they're going to be relatively direct and uh, playing with Cosgrove and Main. It was likely they're going to try and try and get the ball up there and, and have a go. Um, so it wasn't surprising to see them necessarily get an early chance. It was uh, obviously Rangers have been so solid throughout the season. Balogun gets maybe caught under the the ball a little bit, surprised by that, and then Golson uh, went to deck and that. You know, it's a, it's again, it's it's sort of small margins, isn't it? We've seen it in a lot of games so far this year. If uh, if Cosgrove does better there, um, it might make it a, a a much different different game. But again, it's it's sort of a matter of quality there, isn't it? On his left foot from a relatively wide angle, and he really lashed at it. And uh, I think the difference in quality then maybe in the strikers was shown later in the game. With um, obviously Morales had missed a chance of his own there, but. Uh, he did a lot better with the, the chances he got later in the game. Okay. There was another little kind of... It was kind of back and forth in that, at that early period of the game. I think Aberdeen had a couple of breakaways in the first uh, 10, 15 minutes and then uh, Hadji had a shot which kind of fizzed right over the bar. I thought that was a well-struck shot. But after about 15 minutes, uh, did you think that Rangers just really started to assert their dominance in the game, Jim? Yeah, Rangers just kind of up the gears a little bit. I don't think they kind of got to top gear for 
to be fair, but I, kind of the first 15 minutes, it was very even, and then after that, Aberdeen barely laid a glove on Rangers for the rest of the game. I mean, even after they scored, I don't think they kind of really offered a huge amount, so that was fairly comfortable for me. Rangers start kind of asserting some level of dominance in the match. Uh, there was like one major kind of opportunity, I think before that, Kate Kent had kind of failed to see Haji, he was on an overlap, and then there was another one with Davis, uh, played it through at Morelos, um, and maybe he just looked a wee bit nervous when he went through, but then there was a real chance uh, when Morelos kind of plays it out to the left of Barisic, he flips it into Haji, Kent leaves kind of Considine for dead, and then it's cleared off the line, comes back out, uh, Tav shoots, and Lewis saves it. Um, was uh, what, what were you thinking there? Again, were you thinking it wasn't going to be Rangers Day? Uh, I, I don't know about that, because it was fairly early on, and as James said, but, but that's uh, another couple of really clear-cut opportunities, early doors. I thought um, the way Kent's been, I think I was looking out before the game, like he scored once in the last 15 games, so after a really strong start to the season, he has struggled in front of goal. Um, and I think over the course of his Rangers career, he didn't necessarily back him in those sorts of situations. Um, but I thought he, he took it really well. Brilliant first touch and opened it up. It looked like he'd done everything. Great strike. Um, but it was very good from Hayes covering on the line because basically they had the keeper and both posts covered, which is very rare in open play to have that sort of protection on the goal line. So um, I thought he did pretty much everything right there. And then Tav as well, who who likes to balloon those sorts of ones when it comes back to him, so around the half fall and, and stuff like that. Uh, lovely, like, driven shot and, and a decent save. So I think there was there was plenty of intent there. Um, yeah, and, and it was obviously a sign of of the dominance that Rangers were uh, asserting and sort of what was going to come from it. Next incident was probably changed the match. I don't know if you've seen that Rangers were on top of in, in top of Aberdeen, but Again, another week in a one-two. Morelos with Bar- a with Aribo. He, he's played in. He's bearing down on goal. Ryan Hedges clips him. What do you think about the red card, James? Is it a red card? Do you think it was harsh? Or? No question about it. Absolutely no question about it. What about you, John? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was a red card. Like, um, I, I think it's a really weird one, the concept of having players that are connected to clubs in the studio trying to punt it because it's that and then we'll talk about it later on the red card like what are you supposed to say are you supposed to drop your your mates in it and be like I you know I think you should be getting a six match battle for that uh, it's not really very realistic but yeah I mean it was a red card it, it's kind of a weird one because like obviously he gets a little bit of a neck on him but it's not a totally obvious you know coming together with the leg to then go into Morales's leg so yeah, it's, it's obviously a minor touch and he has his arm out and that sort of stuff, but it's it's clearly a red card. The one thing I would say, though, is obviously Morales missed the early chance. Uh, then that magic through ball from Davis, he didn't really capitalise on. And I think he was running. He was in the process of running that straight into Lewis. Um, because I think in the clip, when he when he goes down, he's looking at Lewis. The ball's absolutely nowhere, he's nowhere near um, cocked to get off a shot. Uh, and Lewis is coming out to him, so I think it's it's done him a favour there because uh, he's a, he was in a bit of a rut of thinking too much. I think about his chances, um, which is only natural, obviously, when he's he's not been scoring prolifically. So I think that did him a favour, and that's that in itself is a big contribution to the game, winning a penalty and, and getting a red card for for an opposition player that early on. I, I mean, the first time I seen it, I thought it was harsh, but he, like, the referee's left with no choice to send him off. You know, you know, it is an accident, and he does kind of clip him. Uh, he kept clips him it's a red card but I thought it was like if it happens to your team you're probably raging because it's accidental but uh, you know, I, I don't even think it is accidental because he's got the arm out pulling at the jersey as well so he knows mm-hmm. exactly what he's doing um, it's one of these ones where they, they, they go across the back of him and they, they, they hope for that wee clip of the ankles mm-hmm. because you know you're going to get 50-50 the ref might go oh, it was just an accident you might get the other side where they go, no, it's deliberate. But no, I, I, I think uh, Hedges has known precisely what he's been doing. He's went across and he's did a wee grab at his jersey. So yeah, it's, for me, it's, it's a very deliberate act and he's been caught. Um, the penalty, though, Jesus, I think we can all agree that that was absolutely hopeless. He took it so confidently, struck it so well. And... Uh, 
I sent the keeper the wrong way, but it went wide. And, and again, it's another one. Is, is this going to be Rangers' day? You know, I, mean, I know that I've asked that question a few times, but it never actually really felt like that. Did it? I always felt as if Rangers had something in them and they had an attitude about them today. But I, um, the penalty, what gives you your thoughts on that? What was, what was, what did you think about that penalty from James Tavernier? Well, I, I think, like, uh, as you say, probably in terms of it's less decisive once you know that you know the man's also been sent off for it um so you know you're going to have that advantage to go on from there but yeah look it, it's kind of weird because he's he scored nine or whatever it was so far this season but still sort of etched in my brain of the ones that he missed last year so every time he steps up I'm still not necessarily that confident um and yeah, it's an interesting one because it, it, it makes it look worse because obviously he's completely done Lewis and he goes the other way. He's absolutely bombing it for the other corner, leaving the entirety of the net uh, to find and he's sort of slid it wide. But it, it, it wasn't even really, it didn't sort of skew off the side of his foot or anything. He just essentially placed it wide and obviously he's chastised himself afterwards. But yeah, it, it didn't look great. But I, I mean, you know, he, he was at some stage sort of going goal and assist every game for the space of about two months. So there was obviously going to be a time when it wasn't going to be going perfect for him. Um, and you're going to miss one every now and then, aren't you? So it, it didn't cost anything in the end. So, uh, James, what did you think of James Tavernier's response to missing that penalty? Like the way that he, the way that he in the preceding minutes up until Rangers scored, because obviously he was heavily involved in the goal. Um, he leaves Johnny Hayes on the deck and he finds Ryan Kent. He kind of slips it to Morelos. It's a great finish, but I felt as if there was a, as if he kind of upped his game, as if he really, really was going for it after that. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's quite fair. It's, it's one of those moments where you kind of, either your head goes down and your your shoulders slump or, you know, you kind of bag your chest up and you go for it and Tavern, you went for a while. Uh, it's what you can't expect for Tavernier, though. We've seen it a million times over the last five years now where something's went wrong and it can either hide or it can come out and fight. And 99 times out of 100, it comes out and fights. So, it's, yeah, it was exactly what you expect from him. I, th- I think that's a, sort of the, the thing with Tav, though. Like if, he wasn't, if he didn't sort of have that attitude, he just simply wouldn't be at the club anymore because the amount of abuse he copped for about four years, mm-hmm. he'd have been down the road. Like, he's not even, you know, if you're not Scott, you're from England, you've come up, you've made the move up, it'd have been away ages ago if he didn't fancy it. Um, and, yeah, he's just got that attitude where, yeah, he's got really high standards for himself, I think, probably now more than ever. So, yeah, it's obviously, it's just going to push him to go higher and higher and higher up the pitch. Uh, you know, he just spent half the, half the rest of the game in six-yard box, so uh, trying to make up for it. So, yeah, great attitude. Um, I, I'm heading towards half time. I think Rangers started moving the ball really, really well. Uh, this is like the wee period of the game that I think that we saw like Rangers really fluent, and it was good because the last couple of games maybe we haven't been the performance hasn't been at the best at its best. And, and I thought, particularly in that part of the match, we, we were playing well. Um, and then there was another incident which could have potentially, probably should have. Been a red card um, with Curtis Main who, who flew into Borna Barisic. He obviously got yellow and was hooked about two minutes later. But did you think? Did you think that was a red? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm amazed that he didn't get a red card for that. And to be honest, and it's maybe chanced it a little bit, but I wouldn't be shocked if the the compliance officer made a rear appearance and had a look at it as well. Yeah, yeah. Did we miss out the goal there, though? No, 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 no. Oh, no, did we tell you that? Oh, I mean, we can, we can go back. I don't think, I think we more touched on Tavern here, to be fair. So I think they're right. I, I think no. we never, uh, I, I, I just wanted to say how good, how good it was. Uh, before we move on the thing. Yeah, it was an amazing night. It was a great finish. Very and, and just like something that I haven't seen for months and months and months. Cause, and I think Chris Boyd was talking about it afterwards. I sort of, I've been trying to wrap my head around the concept of him being a better player when he's not in the box. And I think there are there are definitely elements to that argument of he contributes a lot. But sometimes I think when he gets out there, he, he can be quite sloppy in terms of his layoff play at times. And I thought at the start of the game, there was a few times he gave the ball away when it was 
really, really simple stuff. But see his natural instinct when he's in there. Now, granted, it hasn't actually been there this year, but once see once he gets in and around there, that's peak Europa League last season. Uh, both of them, the finishes. But I mean, the way he obviously shifts it, that first touch is perfect. And it's a fairly simple pass from Kent and him, isn't it? But it's really accurate and it allows him to get the one touch and the shot off. And there's, I don't, there's not another striker in the league who can sort of produce finishes like that, I don't think. Um, but he, he obviously hasn't done it enough this year, but I thought it was brilliant. Do you think, think maybe he relaxed? Because obviously they're saying, hey, he looked a wee bit nervous and maybe second-guessing himself. And he said he wasn't completely, like, he wasn't just being natural. Do you think he relaxed when Aberdeen went down to 10 men? Because obviously the, injury, the pressure was off the injuries a little bit. And well, I, I think that's more just, I, I think it was just more that that's in, that was an instinct goal rather than you're bearing down in the keeper or you've got time to think about it. He was just like, oh, this is what I do. Like, touch and I'll get a shot off. And it was just so crisp. Um, you know, and he didn't have that sort of time to to think about the fact that he hasn't been scoring goals, and then it went in, and he was a totally different player after that. Um, but yeah, yep. I uh, I think is it, was there anything else before half time? Uh, no, I also sorry, that was also my fault. The main uh, main was tackle was one hundred percent red. Look, I have you seen Derek McInnes when he went off the pitch? You didn't even look at him, man. You didn't even like him. <laughs> well, I mean, and main trudges off, and he's like, that the referee, no, that man, that is a horrific challenge. It was a well, be- beaten once McInnes takes him off, beaten must know, he must know he's made a mistake. Because why, why would you take him off if there was nothing in it when there's two minutes to half time? Like, it was, he, everyone there knew it was a red card, and I think. It's one of those ones. I, I get that it happens quickly, and I think the the linesman was probably in a better position, or certainly closer to it than the referee. But I mean, I, I, it's one of those ones where it's definitely the human factor of can I actually put these lads at home against an old firm team down to nine men before half time? Like, can I do that? And then he just sticks out the yellow. That's uh, may, be... if, if, if if he doesn't send hedges off, he sends men off, but. If he doesn't send hedges off, Maine probably doesn't make that tackle. Do you know what I mean? So uh, it's 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 a uh, six one, but uh, I should have been a red. But uh, uh, so Rangers come out the second half. Um, we go. I uh, we go. We're obviously one nil up. Things are comfortable. They're doing ten men. Did you think that we would um, go for the throat, James? Or did you think we would be more conservative and pragmatic, as you kind of um, suggested, pretty much? Yeah, no, I was going to speak in that pragmatism a little, but I did think they'd maybe come out the first 10, 15 minutes and just have a bit of a go at it. But the kind of the bigger surprise for me was the fact that Gerard didn't make any changes at halftime. Uh, I thought with Aberdeen having gone down to 10 men and Rangers having completely dominated for them, it was probably a good chance for me to bring on somebody like uh, Cedric Kitten or even like a Brandon Barker and just put more pressure on the Aberdeen defence and you know, try and get that early goal and just close the game out. But for whatever reason, he chose not to. Um, but then the goal came itself about five minutes after the restart anyway. So, Aye, talk us through that goal, Jordan, because I, I, I thought that was a superb team goal as well. Yeah, I, I thought the Rebo was pretty quiet in the first half, um, but he sort of came to life a little bit more in the second and... Uh, yeah, drifting out from the right hand side, he, he's he's quite dangerous from there, isn't he? Because his his dribbling's so good, and he can go either way. Um, not necessarily cross the ball, but to drive into the box. And it, the the flick from Kent is one of those ones that again, first time you're not really sure if he's meant it or not. But that was brilliant because the guy's got, I think, sort of the the talents hanging out of him, but he can't really make up his mind what to do with it sometimes uh, but that was obviously a, an, another sort of instinct thing and a lovely touch and then that's where else I think if he hadn't scored the first goal he doesn't score there but that's again textbook um, the touch and, and, and getting the finish off so yeah that, I think that it sort of looked like the game was buried at that point um, but it was really good to, uh, just on James saying about the subs and stuff there I think uh, today was the first time in a while I sort of looked at the bench and thought it didn't look the best in terms of people who could maybe influence and change the game. I think you've obviously got Defoe and Itten, guys who are good finishers who could come on and finish moves, but I think if the pattern of play wasn't great, 
uh, there wasn't maybe a whole lot there because Zungu's, you know, maybe best in deep in that sort of combative role. And there wasn't a lot of other creativity maybe there with the Greg Stewart if, if Barker was there as well. It's I, I thought that it was sort of unsurprising actually, but that that, that it got quite deep in the game before he brought Zungu on. But he absolutely he absolutely loves that. We we took in Zungu ten minutes at the end. Must have been his contract. Last eight games or something like that, he subbed them on. Uh, it's, in, it's difficult for him to get time because that they, those three in midfield, obviously, before the Celtic match, we're talking maybe didn't have the bite that you would want the Jack in our field, but they, they've, they've, they've done very well at Evo Kamara and Davis. I think Stephen Davis in particular, and so what is he, 35, and he's just so energetic and he's just constantly, you know, he just reads the game well. He, he's, he's the complete pivot of the side, and I, I think he's probably our main man in the middle of the pitch. and Jungu, I think, plays in his position. So um, it's hard for him to get time in minutes minutes uh, to play. I, th- I think it's where you touched on Kent. I, sh- I think today there was flashes of Kent's, uh, Kent at the start of the season. What, what do you think about that, Jim? Yeah, I thought it was one of his better performances today. He was direct. He looked to get forward and get the ball down. And f- he tried to take men on for a change. It's something he's not really done much recently. He always seems to kind of look for the pass and to, to go for things that way. But today he was, he was a bit happier taking on full-backs and I think he got much more joy out of it. There was a couple of ones, one where he skewed it uh, right high into the stands. But I think there is maybe a wee bit of like a kind of confidence thing uh, because he's been in and out of form. But the talent's very clearly there. And um, I, thought, I thought that we should... I thought, We've seen some of the best of it today. and ho- Hopefully, he can get back up to the standard that he was playing right at the start of the season and, and add more numbers. He obviously got two assists today, which is, which will do his confidence good. Um, from there, uh, what did you think about the uh, how, how Rangers handled going 2-0 up all the way up until the Aberdeen goal? And Do you think that the team's determination to maybe add a third contributed to uh, Aberdeen pulling one back, John? Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's partially a bit of uh, adrenaline, maybe with this sort of Rangers team. They're, they're quite keen to sort of assert themselves on on other sides, and that's that's not a bad thing. Uh, dude, there's a couple of times just on the very on the very occasional slip up so far this season that you maybe people will point to the fullbacks being so high up, but I think they're talking about that after the game. It's literally just what has worked for Rangers, so it's hard to sort of point the finger at that. I think. Chris Boyd was good to point out Rebo switching off uh, and that's maybe the difference with when we're talking about how well the midfield three of them without Arfield and Jack those guys are maybe a bit more street smart and we've certainly talked about Rebo in terms of the 50-50s and the physicality in there um, but yeah it, it's hard to say Look, it, it's Tab is so far out of position that yeah it's unnecessary it is unnecessary when you're 2-0 up there's absolutely no doubt about that um, but that's also the way they play essentially for 90 minutes every week. Um, and the players are normally... The, the fact that that hasn't happened more often is a testament to how disciplined the midfielders have been all season. So, uh, yeah, they, they made it difficult for themselves for no for no real reason. But, again, I, I think they were all right. Essentially, after that, the goal was... I thought Balogun got pulled very, very far left in the lead-up to the goal. Um, and that's maybe a, a lack of bodies at the back as well. And then uh, I thought Goldson didn't do a huge amount wrong, but and it was a decent finish from Kennedy, who showed plenty of appetite to get on the end of it from from starting quite far back. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't a great goal to concede, but also like it's what's that twenty three games six conceded. So mm-hmm. I mean you're gonna you're gonna concede the odd one every now and then. And and today it looked it looked bad. I think particularly just because it. It, it stemmed from the way Rangers play and it, it maybe wasn't the most sensible. What about you, James? What, what did you think of the Aberdeen goal? It was just a bit of slackness. Uh, I thought a lot of the life had kind of came out of the game and maybe the 10 minutes before it. And the Rangers, Rangers were just kind of caught unaware and uh, we were sleeping a little bit and were a little bit too comfortable with where they were in the game and they got caught out for it. But even after the goal, I thought Aberdeen very, very quickly reverted back to type and were very happy just to sit behind the ball and let Rangers just control it and spray passes around. And they didn't really look to come and try to get a second and get a point for the game, which I thought was a bit odd. I think 
after that goal, Aberdeen goal went in, it was a wee bit of wake up call. I think Rangers were enjoying themselves. And like I say, there was some really good football getting played out there by Rangers today. And I think they were enjoying themselves and everybody was kind of wanting on the score sheet. Maybe Tavern here wanted to make up for missing the penalty. So he's in the Aberdeen box whilst they're, whilst they're about to roll it past Alan McGregor. But uh, <laughs> I th- the, the, the only real blip um, in the match, uh, which I thought over the piece, I think Rangers were deserved winners. I thought even though Aberdeen went down to 10 men, um, I think later on there was a chance for Kamara. I think that was the only really other big chance that we managed to, to create. Maybe should have done better, but Joe Lewis gets down, saves it quite well. Um, but I, I thought, I thought even with Aberdeen going down to ten men, it's difficult to say because it changes the game. I thought Aberdeen in, in spells showed a decent little bit of quality sometimes. I, think, I thought their goals showed like a wee bit of quality and a wee bit of quickness and a wee bit of sharpness. And I, I, I don't think they're, they're like a, they're an awful side at all, Aberdeen. I, I, I think that it's a big result for Rangers because, and, and obviously we got lucky with it with, with the penalty and, and the red card or whatever but I, I, I thought that they, they contributed to the match before then um, and it might have been a different one but a big result for Rangers is there any kind of closing thoughts that you have on it? Or, uh, uh, I <laughs> yeah I, I think it was certainly the most enjoyable game I think for quite some time because Rangers still been getting the results like maybe for the last month or so without really playing that well Uh and I think you're right. I think Aberdeen contributed to that, just partially through football, partially through providing like a footballing challenge and actually be willing to have a go, or sorry, a physical challenge and being willing to have a go at the start. I thought it was a good game, and certainly when we're looking to cover it and looking to get stuff out of it, there was a lot that happened. Um, when sometimes in these behind closed doors games, again, it can feel a little bit about the result and going through the motions. So I thought it was a good game and. Massive three points for Rangers, and yeah, that's uh, Motherwell might have a bit of a managerial bounce um, going into next week, but no reason to to fear that after after going to Tadra and getting three points. Yep. So uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, we'll be back this week with more videos in the Rangers News YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Join the conversation. The biggest thing is the more the more kind of contribution that you guys give, the more subscriptions you get, the more likes you get, the more time we're going to have to pour into the channel, the better the content's going to be. We want to make sure that it's the right stuff that you guys enjoy. So subscribe uh, if you're watching and, and like it. And we'll see you this week. Oh, 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 oh.